Hi, right, this is Ivadi NX from the Candid Frame, and I'm going to do something a little different with this video. I'm going to actually show you some of my own images or images that led up to a, a photograph that I was pretty, pretty pleased with. One of the things I talk about a lot in, in my workshops and with my uh, individual students is this whole concept of working a scene. And uh, I wanted to show you some examples of a recent photograph that I made and what led up to it and what came afterwards. So um, what I'm going to show you here is some street photography that I do uh, during my breaks from the, from the studio. I do, uh, I work at a studio out in uh, Westlake, which is just west of downtown Los Angeles. And during my lunch breaks or during my other breaks, I usually go out with my camera from anywhere between 15 minutes to about half an hour, sometimes 45 minutes to make to make photographs and sometimes this is the only photography that I practice during that g given day. So on this day I was uh, walking around the Westlake area which is around Wilshire and Alvarado for those of you familiar with Los Angeles and I'm walking down Wilshire and I see these red chairs being illuminated by the midday midday light. Um, I immediately was drawn to the, the saturated red colors the repeating pattern and this is the very first image that I made. So I started taking pictures of these chairs, uh, trying to figure out where the photograph was. And as I made these pictures, one of the things that I immediately picked up on was that the photograph of just the chairs really probably wasn't going to make it. So what I started to do is I started including people walking in front of the scene as this fellow was. Not because I thought it would make a great shot, but just because I was trying to figure out what do I need to do here. Um, I was still refining this overall frame of the chairs. That's why I kept shooting it in this image. I decided to get a little closer uh, to see whether going closer was going to be the remedy for this. But I kept shooting this, waiting for people to walk in the frame, and I wasn't feeling it. So I decided to back up. And when I backed up, then I started thinking there's something there. Uh, I noticed the, the shadow of the tree that was cast here, and I really liked how the, the shadow helped to break up the pattern, not only of the chairs, but of the security gate. And I looked at this alley, and I liked the very graphic nature of the alley. Um, the, the diagonal line created by this uh, this wall and this uh, and this fence and how it helped to guide uh, the eye from the left hand corner of the frame. The same can be said of this building here with this angle here and this patch of blue which creates almost like an arrow all of which which is guiding people's eyes towards this area of the frame here. So as I made this frame I thought okay this is a little more interesting than just isolating the chairs. So I knew that backing up was probably a good idea. So I just kept shooting trying to slowly refine the frame and as people started walking by one of the things I wanted to figure out is where do I place them in order to strike a nice balance within the composition. So I played around with people in different positions and constantly refining my frame trying to figure out how much of the sky, how much of the mural, how much of the chairs, all of those things do I include in the frame. Now with this shot I kind of uh, thought okay Having someone here in this area is probably a good idea. Uh, it seems like that brought a nice balance uh, to the overall feel of the of the frame. wasn't sold on this guy as a subject matter, but and that wasn't particularly important. What I wanted to do is kind of figure out, okay, what's my overall composition need to be, and where do I need to have someone in order to make a fairly interesting frame? So I kept shooting. And as you can see from frame to frame, even with the shots where I don't include people, I continue to shoot because I'm tr still trying to figure out exactly how do I make this frame work. Now this fellow here with the uh, with the pink bag uh, is kind of interesting. The shot isn't so much so, but uh, I saw this woman here coming with those pink pants that might have been interesting. And even though they complement each other very nicely because of the pink color, uh, their location with the frame wasn't really working, uh, so I just kept shooting. Uh, I was able to look up and down the street regularly, so I was always sort of having the opportunity to anticipate when someone was likely going to be crossing and prepare myself for when they came into the frame. And so I saw this guy with the red hat and with the ice cream cart, 
And though I, I like the red hat mimicking the uh, color of the chairs, you know, it just it just wasn't working. But I just kept I just kept shooting. And uh, you know, saw this woman with the umbrella with the stroller. I got her in a good position, but uh, I really didn't. I just didn't like the overall shot. And one of the changes that I I started making uh, was that I started including including more of the sidewalk. I noticed fairly early on that I was cutting off people's legs and feet. And I didn't want to do that, so I knew I needed to be pretty uh, pull, uh, move further back. And at some point, I'm really right at the curb. If I'd gone any further back, uh, I would have been out in the street, and uh, I didn't want to want to do that. So I'm pulling back. I'm using a fixed 20 millimeter lens, which on the Samsung NX500 that I'm using is the equivalent of a 35 millimeter. I uh, probably could have done with a slightly wider angle focal length, but this is what I had to work with. So, uh, see this guy walking into the alley. I see this woman here. She has some interesting body language. Uh, I like the red of her purse uh, matching the, the color of the chairs. But, again, uh, it just seems very awkward. I, I really like what he's doing here in terms of him looking back over his shoulder. Uh, but what's happening here is just... It's just not there. And one of the things that, that, that I was doing is I was photographing a lot of people walking by, um, but uh, I was looking for just something interesting. And this woman here, I think, gave it to me. As she enters the frame here, she starts to pull her hood over her head, as you can see here. And that, for me, was sort of an interesting gesture. And here, at this particular moment, um, I think that the gesture is really interesting, and her placement in the frame um, works works best. You'll see in the subsequent image that uh, she's still doing that gesture. Her body language is really interesting here. I think much more interesting than this. This is just a lot more dynamic, especially because of the way her, her leg is bent. But uh, I think in terms of her placement within the frame, this works a lot better. I would have loved to have had her in this position, but doing this body language, but you know we can't have uh, have everything. But even though I had that moment, I just kept shooting, and I kept you know seeing what else I could get into the frame because I knew that that what I was looking for was just the right character and the right gesture. Um, a lot of these people were just walking past me, and so I was looking not just for an interesting subject, but trying to find someone who was doing something interesting. That woman gave that to me, but. I didn't stop then. Uh, I'm always wanting to exhaust all the possibilities. This guy with the hat is really interesting, but uh, you know, um, all he's doing is walking. There's really no nothing interesting there. And one of the things that I always try to do is when I have people that are walking in opposite directions, uh, trying to time it so I can get something interesting. Uh, and this is really hit and miss. I mean, you can shoot a lot of this. Uh, but there's not a whole, whole lot of a control that you can have. But I, I keep shooting. This woman with a red bag is kind of interesting. But again, you know, I'm just not I'm just not feeling it. Again, people walking across each other. This woman's kind of interesting with her gait, and she also has a, like a red purse in her hand or or a case for her phone. But again, not particularly great. This guy with the with the bike is kind of interesting, but not particularly. So I just keep shooting, guy with the red jacket. Um, this is sort of a good position, but again, I'm losing the face. Um, and one of the other things I started to do is I started shifting a little bit to the right uh, because I started paying attention to what was happening here with the sky. Uh, as you'll see in some other frames, I started moving more and more to the left because I, I noticed this little sliver of blue and I started figuring out how much of that can I include in the frame. So even though I'm really paying a lot of attention to people who are walking to and from uh, the left and the right, uh, I'm not losing sight of my overall composition, which is why you'll see that I'm always sort of changing my camera position or changing the framing because I'm still trying to figure out what's happening with my overall setting. Am I work making that work to the best of its ability? If I look at the frame without anyone in it, am I composing the scene uh, in the best way possible because I think that 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 nailing the setting is so critical for a lot of my a lot of my photographs and when I have the luxury of time I try and do that as much as possible um, the scene is in flux it's changing all the time but I need to know that the core of my shot is going to work 
Now this this woman is doing something really interesting in terms of her body language. I like the shadow of her on the uh, on the ground. Uh, that's another possibility. But you can see here in terms of the change, uh, I'm losing some of the mural up at the top because I'm framing a little down, a little lower. Um, but I keep shooting. This time I've shifted way over to the left to see, oh, do I want to include more of the sky here? And, and one of the things you'll notice here is that I lose the shadow of the tree on the far right. So that sort of breaking up of the frame in terms of the right-hand side um, uh, is no longer there. And also the chairs start becoming more secondary to the shot. Um, and it's more weighted for this. This becomes the bigger part of the, the shot, and this becomes secondary which uh, I don't think uh, was working here. I mean, I, I kind of like some of the stuff that's happening here, but uh, I felt like what I started with is what I preferred, and I go back to that eventually. But one of the things that I, I don't like in retrospect is this expanse of white wall here and this tree, which is in all the other frames, but because I'm including so much more of this here, it becomes a real, a real visual draw here, and there's really not anything interesting happening here. I do like this sort of patch in blue and this how it terminates in this yellow, but this expanse of white wall is a bunch of negative space in which nothing, nothing is happening. But I keep trying to shoot, trying to figure out, mm, does that work? If I get somebody in there, does that, does that give me something that I haven't been able to get uh, thus far? And, you know, for the most part, I kept shooting and I just wasn't, I just wasn't feeling it. But I kept shooting, trying to figure out Huh, you know, could I be wrong? Could I be wrong? And I was moving the camera up and down, uh, refining it even more, but then I started shifting over to the right slightly. You know, and just kept and just kept framing it. Because sometimes it's not immediately obvious to me what the shot is. And uh, I will make a bunch of changes, as you've seen here, trying to refine my vision until I I nail something. But one of the challenges that I had is this was my lunch break. And so by the time I started shooting, I had probably about 20 minutes here. So I was, I could have probably stayed for another 20 um, here, but I just didn't have the time. Uh, interesting fellow, but again, um, just another person just walking, walking down the street. And I'm, I've shot so many pictures of people walking down the street that they really, there has to be something exceptional in terms of their look, in terms of their gait, in terms of their 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 hands. It just there has to be something more interesting than that. This guy was doing a little something more. Uh, he was trying to catch a bus or whatever. Um, but you can see overall, you know, it's just a bunch of people walking down the street. Now, this woman in the alleyway that you see here, I thought she might give me something interesting. So I was, I had my eye on her as I was continuing to shoot here. And then she started moving down here into the frame. And that's probably the most interesting moment in terms of the series of images of her. But again, I'm not really sold on her as an element in, in, the, in the photograph. But I kept shooting. And that's what I keep telling people is, is too many people will shoot a scene and they'll make one or two photographs and then they'll move on thinking that, you know, within one or two frames they'll get it or they won't. And uh, I know a lot of photographers uh, and very few of them do I think get away with shooting just a single frame for every scene and, and get coming away with something. You really have to work it here. I mean, you can see here that I'm starting moving a little more to the right. Um, I'm getting less of the wall, getting slightly more of the, of the blue there. But by this time, I'm, I'm really sort of watching the clock because I know I'm going to have to get back soon. Uh, at this point, I've, I've reduced the, the, uh, the area of the blue to just this little sliver. So I, I, I'm liking it, but I'm trying to work it differently. Um, and then I'm losing or I'm gaining some out of the top of the mural, depending on how I'm trying to position here. See this guy walking down the alleyway, and I'm thinking, hmm, could be interesting if I get someone uh, on the right-hand side of the frame to balance it out. I keep shooting, but no one ever comes comes there. You know, and you just and you just keep shooting and keep shooting. This guy was doing something interesting here. Um, I love the way he's holding the jacket. Uh, this is the frame right before. I, I like this frame, but I don't like the fact that I was cutting off the feet. Um, and that was about it. So, okay, so for the uh, the two shots that I thought might work. Were, were these two. And 
I like the body language of the girl. I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, if I had shot nothing else and it was just that, I probably would have been okay with this. Nothing to, you know, to write home about. But in terms of what was happening overall, in terms of the overall feel of the frame, the balance, uh, all the elements working together, it's, it's good. But I have this image here, and I think this image on the right is a much more successful uh, photograph. The overall framing is very similar. Uh, you'll see here that I only have that sliver of blue here where I have that expanse of blue here a little more. Um, this is tilted a little more up. You're getting more of the faces of the uh, of, uh, of, of the people here in the mural. I got a little more of the shadow. Uh, but what really is critical for this shot is the overall gesture. I think this is the most interesting aspect of the photograph. Not just the red counterpoint uh, of the red uh, with the red chairs, the blue with the blue here, the blue with your jeans, the blue, all that, all those those color things. Um, I just like the body language and the gesture here because I think it, it elevates the shot in in great comparison to everything else that I shot there in that 20, 20 minutes that I was there. If I'd had more time, I probably would have spent another 20 to 30 minutes here trying to see if I could get something better uh, better than this, but this demonstrates a, a lot of what I'm doing out on the street where I'll I'll find a setting and I'll work the setting and try to nail that down and as I have people walking into the frame uh, I'll try and sort of complete it with a gesture with a flourish or just have something interesting that provides a, a wonderful visual accent. Uh, when I take people out on the street on my street photography workshops, I'm always telling them, you know, find your studio on the street. Find a place to camp out and just work it and just for as long as you need to. Uh, a big a big myth is that your next best shot is just around the corner, by which I mean that people will take one or two frames and then they're off to, to, to keep walking in hunt of something else. And sometimes the best photograph that you have is right in front of you. But because you're not spending enough time, because you're being lazy in terms of practicing your, your seeing, you'll lose and you'll miss out on that opportunity. And a lot of my shots, uh, especially now, I've, I've transitioned uh, from um, taking photographs to making photographs to now I'm building photographs. And by building, I mean that I'm really sort of set, trying to settle in and really pay attention to every element in the frame and try and build it into something that really that really really works so hope that that was helpful to you um, this is part of what I normally do on this video channel is I take images from the candid frame flicker pool and I provide critiques so this is something a little different but let me know whether you like uh, uh, liked this and I may do some more of them but uh, I'm usually pulling images from the the candid frame flicker pool and that's just Listeners of the Candid Frame or people who are found this found this YouTube videos, these YouTube videos, have been uploading their images to our group here, and I pull anywhere between three or five images for each uh, each week's video, and provide some insight in terms of photography, usually related to street photography. Um, also, if you're in the Los Angeles area in late January, I am going to be conducting a street photography workshop, an all-day workshop through the Los Angeles Center of Photography. It's going to be on January 30th, 2016. So if you know you're going to be in the area uh, on that Saturday and you want to uh, walk the streets of Los Angeles with me, uh, go to uh, lacpphoto.org uh, and, uh, and join me. It'll be great to have you. And if you've um, not heard of the Candid Frame Photography Podcast, well, this is it. And it is an interview podcast in which I interview photographers about their work and their careers. Uh, it's not about tech. It's not about gear. It is about living a photographic life. So if you're interested in that, visit me at thecandidframe.com. And if you like what you're seeing in these videos, please subscribe. So thanks again for joining me, and I will see you next time.